Praise the Lord, everybody. It's Monday morning. And yes, even though it's Monday morning, this is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for being a part of prayer ministry on this Monday. It's hard to believe that we're already uh, well into the month of June and uh, almost halfway through the year. We're getting very close to already the halfway point of this year, and it's just unbelievable. Thank God for what he's doing in 2021. If you have a praise report this morning, uh, please share that with our team. We enjoy reading those as well as taking your needs uh, before the Lord in prayer together. Amen. I want to uh, read to you this morning from Luke chapter 15. I'm actually going to read the devotion first. And as I have mentioned in the past uh, couple of devotions, uh, due to being uh, out of town this morning, uh, I will be um, praying in more of a general sense uh, for the needs categorically. And as you are able to see what needs are actually current, I ask that you would call those names before the Lord today and help me pray for those situations. I feel especially uh, burdened for uh, the spiritual needs. Uh, we need a breakthrough in families. We need to see some things turn around in our homes. And uh, I want to read to you from Luke chapter 15 because uh, this touches on another one of the lies that Christians often come to believe and we've got to rid our minds of all these untruths and misconceptions that the enemy plants in our heads. Luke chapter 15, you will know it as the story of the prodigal son. And he said, a certain man, this is verse 11 of Luke 15, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living, and not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's house have bread enough and despair, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be married. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Now his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. I wanted to take the time to read that whole story to you because it really is meant to all be uh, kept together. And this lie that we come to believe sometimes is, well, so-and-so, fill in the blank, they will never change. It's one of the greatest lies the devil uses to discourage us 
is that a person in our life will never change. And whoever it is, you fill in the blank. Most likely that person is someone that you deeply love and care about. Maybe it's a child or a grandchild, a parent or a sibling or a close friend. And you've lost hope because you believe that they will never change. On the other hand, the person in that blank could be someone who stirs anger inside of you. Dreadful, enjoying sin. And at least from the outside looking in, they seem as if they could care less how it affects other people. And maybe in moments of frustration, you describe that person's actions as pure evil. That person could be an ex-spouse, a dishonest boss, a cantankerous neighbor, or even a world leader who's causing all kinds of problems for the citizens he's supposed to be serving. It's easy to look at people's actions and say these people are beyond any hope of change. And whether that person in your blank is someone that you love or someone you resent or someone who stirs both those emotions, if you have fallen into the belief that he or she will never change, then it's time for you to be the one who changes. I'm talking to myself this morning as well. We need to realize that we are believing a lie if we believe that a person cannot change. We've got the emphasis in the wrong place. We're focusing on an impossible person instead of the God of the impossible. You see, it's not who's in that blank. It's who do you trust? God is that person's creator. God still loves them. He has the power to change them. No one is too far gone for him. There is no human still alive who is outside the not impossible reach of God's forgiving and transforming grace. And yes, there are people who uh, end up being turned over to a reprobate mind, but it's not our job to determine who those people are. It's not our place to decide who those people are. We should never believe that a person is unrecoverable. We should trust in the grace of God. So who's in your blank today? If you're honest, has there been a time when you believed God could not change them? I can say that I can honestly uh, attest to that today, that I have fallen into that trap of believing that there's someone that God is just not going to be able to reach. Amen. Let's leave those people in the hands of God today, and let's trust in the power of the God of the impossible today. So I want us to renew our commitment to praying for these spiritual needs. I know we call these names out again and again and again, and sometimes it seems like that these situations are hopeless. There are names on this prayer list that we pray every day, these spiritual needs, family members that have been on this list every day for over a year when we started this prayer group. But let's not give up hope. We serve a God who is able, and let's not believe that they will never change. Let's believe that God will change them. And he may have to change us in the process, but let's trust in him today to do just that. Lord, we come to you in your matchless name, knowing that you are all-powerful. Lord, you are great, and you are greatly to be praised. And we know today that you're moving in every need that we are willing to give to you. You are able to keep that which we commit into your hand. Help us today, Lord, to be willing to place it in your hand, to leave it on the altar, and to trust you with every situation. Oh, God, we believe for your healing touch today, not just for physical needs, but, Lord, especially for these spiritual needs this morning. You see those, Lord, who are backslidden. You see those who have never experienced your, your salvation. You see those who have been hurt, Lord, in the house uh, uh, of their friends. And you see those who have been hurt even in the church, Lord. And they need to be restored. They need to be healed. And your word promises that you will heal our backslidings. We believe, God, that you're touching them right now. We believe that they're not without hope, O oh God. For your mercies are new every single morning. 
and you're reaching for them every second of every day. We pray, God, today that they would be able to hear your voice, that they would be able to feel your tug today upon their heart. Hallelujah. Move in their lives, Lord Jesus. Restore and heal and strengthen and encourage and redirect today, we pray in Jesus' name. We believe, Lord, for healing for those who have mental health issues, Lord, who are struggling with, with disorders of the mind. Oh, God, you're able, Lord, to to rewire and to change around the things that have went wrong. Lord, the generational curses are able to be broken because, Lord, you have made that sacrifice to bring us redemption. We believe, God, for that complete healing right now. We pray, God, for families to be healed. You see the deep issues, the dysfunction, the broken marriages, the struggling homes today, God, the strife that's in families today, the misunderstandings between parents and children and uh, brothers and sisters today. Oh, God, we believe, Lord, for you to bring our families closer together, Lord, that our churches will be stronger. In Jesus' name, we pray, God, for those who are sick today in body. Lord, for those who are recovering from long-term illnesses and those who are going through therapy and rehab today, we believe, God, for your touch upon them. We believe, God, for those who have suffered stroke to recover the function of their limbs, that their minds would not be affected, that their speech would not be affected long-term. In Jesus' name, Lord, we come against every uh, disease that's attacking organs today, the kidneys and the liver and the heart and the lungs uh, and all the vital organs today. We believe, God, for healing today of Parkinson's and joint pain and cancer and back problems and arthritis. We pray for healing of diabetes and hypertension and migraine headaches, Lord, shingles and illness. We we believe, God, today that you are the healer of all disease because your word has proclaimed that to us and shown us the evidence. Uh, Lord, you, there are places we read where you healed them all, and we know, God, that you are able to do that today. And we believe, God, for that all-encompassing healing touch upon every need today. Those who are recovering from surgery, those who are facing upcoming surgeries, we believe for your touch on them today, God. Hallelujah. Those that are suffering with COVID, those countries that are battling this right now, Lord, we believe for your healing touch. You see the problems in India and Malaysia right now, God, we believe for your for your healing touch upon those nations in Jesus' name. We bring every unspoken request to you today, believing for your healing touch. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We give you the glory and the praise. Lord, you care about all these needs this morning. You care about each and every one. Let these things be as according to your word. And as our faith is, so be it unto each of us today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And we give you glory. Let's just take a moment and worship him. Oh, hallelujah. We love you, Father. We love you, oh God. You are so wonderful. You are so worthy. There's no one like you. Hallelujah to your name. Glory and honor and praise be unto you now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Once again today, thanks for being a part of prayer on this Monday morning. I look forward to praying with you again tomorrow right here on Facebook Live at 7.30 a.m.